I wanted to thank um, everyone on this call uh, for the opportunity to participate uh, today to share some of our work and our thoughts about uh, wood and the essential role it plays in getting our industry to zero emissions as rapidly as possible. My name is Aaron Dorf. Uh, so Snowheda has seven offices, main offices worldwide and uh, many projects. And I personally work uh, in the New York office. Many of our projects uh, are projects maybe that, um, you know, people have seen many times, but some of our projects over the last 10 years are a little more special. These are projects that um, uh, are, we call zero or plus projects, which make more energy than they use over their lifespan. Some of the projects that you may have seen include um, some of our larger works uh, in Oslo, uh, in Norway, or in San Francisco, or New York. And some of these special projects uh, also exist around the world uh, from uh, Norway to North America. So in addressing this, the idea of this competition, we thought it was important to discuss Wood's role uh, in, in combating climate change. This chart uh, is a, a version that many have seen. I think it's important really just to note how much of uh, the responsibility for emissions belongs to the building sectors. This, is, this graph is for the US and it's almost 45% of emissions come from buildings. In the building sector, almost one third is from embodied energy, which embodied carbon. So this is where we can focus a lot of attention in terms of making sure that our materials can deal with this issue and reduce or eliminate the carbon process uh, in all buildings in the future. Globally, 45% of all of the emissions actually moves in, into the atmosphere and stays there. The rest of that carbon dioxide and other emissions are captured by either forests on earth or, or oceans. And so 25% is captured by forests, grasslands, and farms, and 30% is absorbed in the top layer of the oceans. The carbon process uh, is complicated, but in its simplest form, you know, trees, and the, and the bigger they get, the better they are. Uh, they use all of their sort of uh, nutrients. They use sun, they take in oxygen, they, um, they convert it into, uh, or they take in CO2, they convert it into oxygen, and they actually hold the carbon in the tree structure and the root structure, and they move it into the ground as well. So when we look at what wood can do, wood not only has one of the lowest embodied energies of any material, but it also has already captured carbon, which is so it gets a double benefit in terms of dealing with global warming. When we look at wood products, some are better than others. They all uh, uh, have lower embodied energy, but we also want to look at which ones are the best. And so the best woods are the ones that you put no energy into because they are reclaimed or recycled. And then as we go to the right, the woods get a little worse in terms of emissions from engineered to sustainable softwoods and hardwoods, and then to non-sustainable softwoods and hardwoods. When wood reads, reaches the end of its lifespan, it actually gives the carbon back to the atmosphere. And so it's important to understand this too, because the way we use wood has another impact on how carbon moves back into the atmosphere. Mature trees are on the left, to all the way to burning, burning uh, wood as fuel on the right. And so these are the different am amounts of years that it takes for wood to go back into the atmosphere, for the carbon to go back into the atmosphere. We also like to think of how wood can be a substitution for other materials, especially the materials that have very high emissions. 
like structural steel, and we can use uh, heavy timber and engineered lumber. There are other materials such as concrete, especially for retaining walls where wood can also be a substitute where we can use heavy timber. And another material that we can replace with wood is insulation where we can use recycled wood products to, to insulate our buildings and structures. So each time we take a high embodied energy material and we replace it with a low embodied energy material, and that is one good way to actually lower the embodied energy 